You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. New details this morning after an auto shop worker was shot and killed. Police say a customer mistook him for a thief. We have the latest in your 11 minutes of nonstop news. The Bulldogs are heading to the national championship. We break down how much it could cost you to see them play in person. It'll be dry but warm for us today. Thunderstorms could return to the area by tomorrow. We're going to time that out for you hour by hour in the full forecast coming up. Let's kick things off on this Monday, January 2nd with a look at the headlines we're following for you. An Atlanta Falcons player is set to appear in court today. Atlanta police say an officer pulled Cameron Batson over about 2 a.m. New Year's Eve, tried to take him into custody for driving drunk. The department says Batson violently fought that officer who fired his weapon. Nobody was hit. Officers say they were able to track down Matson after he ran from that traffic stop. He was released from the Falcons before the season started, but stayed on the practice squad. The team says it is aware of the incident. Jury selection is set to start this Thursday in the RICO case surrounding the alleged Young Slime Life gang. 28 people were named in the Fulton County DA's initial indictment, including rappers Young Thug and Gunna. Since then, a number of defendants have been dropped from the trial, either because they took a plea or because they did not have lawyers. Gunna was released from jail last month after entering his plea. After tomorrow, the airports and roads are expected to go back to their normal travel volume. We'll learn this week how many people actually traveled over the holidays. AAA projected around 102 million would be on the roads, with more than 7 million traveling by air. Now to a developing story out of DeKalb County, where an employee at an auto repair shop is dead and his customer is accused. Police say a misunderstanding led to the shooting. Ariana Manise is live from the Tires Plus on DeKalb Industrial Way following the latest. Good morning, Ariana. Good morning, Cheryl. Flowers and candles now sit in the spot of to where 24-year-old Daniel Gordon was shot and killed. Glass is still in the parking lot after police say a customer shot and killed this 24-year-old. The family shared this picture with us. DeKalb police say Gordon was killed Saturday afternoon after the customer, 30-year-old Quadarius McDowell, had taken his car into this tire plus on DeKalb Industrial Way for service. Police say the customer saw Gordon get into the car and thought he was trying to steal it. Police say he fired at Gordon multiple times, hitting him. They say that McDowell tried to run away, but they were able to find him and arrest him. That customer is now facing murder charges. Back to you. Ariana, thank you. That was a look at your top headlines. Chesley, a pretty mild start to our morning. It is a mild start with temperatures in the 50s in some spots. In some spots, mild enough that we do have some fog out there as well. Dense fog advisory will last until 10 a.m. today. That's when it will lift and we'll have the clouds in place. So it's going to be a mix of sunny clouds as we head through the afternoon. But this morning, you're dealing with this fog. Mainly east of the city of Atlanta is where you're going to find that, especially over toward the Athens area, down through Edenton. We've been seeing some very dense fog there. You see Athens, you're at uh, one mile visibility, zero over into Edenton. Gets a little better better as you make your way toward the city and westward. Have excellent visibility. 10 would be excellent visibility. You can see a little further out with that. Temperatures in the 40s for the most part. You got a couple 50s in here, like Rome at 50, 52 up toward Dalton. You're at 55 in Atlanta. 59 degrees, close to 60 down in Thomaston. So you have some milder starts, of course. We do have that patchy fog in some spots, but we'll see the sunshine. A little bit of it, especially early in the day. You're looking at 60 with partly sunny skies by noon, mostly cloudy skies by the time we get to 3 o'clock, and that's where we'll start to see those temperatures really begin to warm up a little bit. Got a southerly wind coming in, helping to boost those temperatures up. Won't be windy today at all. I think the breeze will be around six or seven miles per hour. That'll be it. Low threat for rain today. It's a 20% chance or less, but it goes up as we head into Tuesday, thanks to a front approaching the area. 80% chance for that rain. I think it will linger into Wednesday morning before it begins to subside by Wednesday afternoon. Clearer as we head into Thursday and Friday, but certainly cooler as well as our temperatures will start to fall off a little bit behind that front that will move through. You can notice uh, already where we start to see some showers begin to pop up uh, just to the west of us. Again, if we see anything at all, if you see anything at all, it'll be on the isolated variety. Quick little shower that moves through. Most of us will stay on the dry side. High pressure down here to the south and east of us, bringing in that southerly pool.
push, helping to boost that temperature up just a little bit, despite the fact that we'll have the clouds around. But it's really off to the west that we'll be watching because that's where we're expecting to see severe weather. You see this tan area here, Memphis, almost into Dallas. You see eastern Texas, much of Arkansas into northern parts of Louisiana under an enhanced risk for severe weather. That's a level three out of possible five. That will shift to the east tomorrow. You notice that enhanced risk stays down to the south and west of us over into central and southern parts of Alabama. For us, we have the level one threat or a marginal risk for severe weather. For now, it's a level one threat. You can see our westernmost counties under that level two threat or a slight risk. What can we see from those thunderstorms? Well, damaging winds, number one, some very heavy rain. Could be an isolated tornado that pops up. For the most part, we'll just be dealing with those damaging winds. Here's how it plays out. Our forecast track model shows the clouds thickening up as we head through the day. You notice those little dots of green, an isolated shower too, certainly possible. We're going to start you off tomorrow morning with uh, mostly cloudy skies. Once we get to the afternoon, here we are by one. You see where we have some isolated showers popping up, but that heavy rain doesn't get in here until after three or four o'clock. A couple of embedded thunderstorms will be with this as well. Going to catch a break during the evening and then overnight more of that rain moves back to us. And for Wednesday morning, we'll be dealing with a few of those scattered thunderstorms as well. By the afternoon, we'll clear that out, get that rain out of the way, get the sunshine back in. But then notice we cool down a bit as we head toward the end of the week. Thursday and Friday, temperatures back to where they should be, back into the 50s. And we'll hold on to that as we head into the upcoming weekend. Continuing your coverage of 11 minutes of nonstop news with the latest on the Bulldogs push for back to back national titles. A week from now, they'll take on Texas Christian University in California. If you are looking to see that game in person, Molly Oak has a closer look at what it'll cost you. Fans could spend thousands not only getting to LA, but then also going to the game. We took a look at orbits.com to check out some flights for you all. As of yesterday, the least expensive flight to Los Angeles from Hartsfield Jackson International Airport was nearly 600 bucks. Now that's for flights leaving on January 7th and returning three days later. Now during that time frame, tickets ran as high as $1,700. Hotels are running anywhere from around $100 to more than 450 bucks a night. Plus, you still have to factor in a rental car or ride share, meals or other events. And of course, everyone's looking at tickets. The cheapest ones I could find on Ticketmaster this morning were just shy of $700. The most expensive sits in the VIP section at $8,500, and that's not including fees. Back to you. It'd be fun to see it in person, but I'll be watching from my couch. Depend on the 11 Alive team as the dogs defend their national title next Monday. Right now on 11alive.com, we've got details on how you can watch the game and a lot of highlights from the Peach Bowl. Today, Pope Benedict the 16th is lying in state at the Vatican. This is a live look right now from Vatican City, Rome. You see quite a number of people in the plaza there. Thousands have lined up to pay their respects. His body will be displayed for three days in an open casket at St. Peter's Basilica. Pope Benedict died on New Year's Eve at the age of 95, almost a decade after he stepped away from his position because of his illness. Pope Francis will preside over Thursday's funeral, which is the first time a pope's successor will oversee the services. New for you this morning, another strain of the Omicron variant is spreading quickly across the U.S. The subvariant is called XBB 1.5. Right now, around 40% of people with COVID have this strain. Lab studies find that XBB can dodge antibodies from previous COVID infections and from vaccinations. That means if you are exposed, you have a higher chance of actually getting reinfected. Experts say there's no indication this will cause more severe illness than other Omicron variants. Happening tomorrow, there's another opportunity to cash in on the Mega Millions jackpot. This first drawing of the new year is currently estimated to be worth $785 million. This is the third time this Mega Millions prize has been more than $700 million. Several Metro Atlanta hospitals have welcomed their first babies of 2023. At Northside, little King Jackson was born right at midnight. He weighed seven pounds, six ounces. King's mom says she's feeling blessed and happy. His dad says this is a once in a lifetime experience. He is so beautiful. Little Kaylor Lane came into the world at Wellstar West Georgia Medical Center at 2.02 in the morning, three hours, seven minutes later. Baby boy Aiden Tate was born at Wellstar Kennestone in Marietta. Chesley, new life in a new year. Absolutely. All right, noon today, we'll be looking at temperatures approaching that 60 degree mark under partly sunny skies or a mix of sun and clouds. Mostly cloudy guy three with temperatures approaching the 70 degree mark. It's going to get on up there a little bit despite the cloud cover. 20% chance for an isolated shower. Most of us won't see that at all. 
Uh, mostly cloudy skies by 6. You're looking at 61 degrees. Yeah, it's going to be a warm one out there, folks. Enjoy. Why do I have an urge to make a to-do list? Is it because it's the Monday of a new year? Maybe. Or the first day of the week. Both. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll see how I do on that. Hope you have a good day, everybody. Today's show is coming up next, and we look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow morning.